subject matter of the video you're about to see could be referred to as public relations. Public relations. That's got rather a cold sound to it. Maybe human relations would be a little better. But no matter how you say it, it all comes down to the same thing. Anytime you deal with the public, you have to do it courteously and yet still be productive. In the scenes that follow, you'll see examples of how to and how not to deal with the public. As our first scene opens, one of our main characters is about to enter the bank to transaction business. Why don't we follow along and see what happens? have everything ready before you come to the window. I don't have all day, lady. Just step to the side till you get everything ready. Next. I'd like to make a deposit, please. You're ten dollars short. What do you mean I'm short? Didn't you count your money before you filled out your deposit slip? Yes, I did. Would you count it again for me, please? Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Fifty one, fifty two, fifty three. There's fifty three dollars here, sir, not sixty three dollars. You people should be more careful before you um fill out these deposit slips. Sorry, lady, but you don't have to be so rude. Rude? You're the one that's rude because if you had filled out your slip properly, we wouldn't even have this problem. Well, fine. Maybe I'll just take my account to another bank, and if you will, just give me my money back. Next. I have a problem with my account. Uh, can you tell me why I have this $15 charge here? You're in the wrong line. Will you please step down to the statement department? Where? Down there and take your problems with you. Why are you so rude? You know, you have a rotten disposition for this job. Seriously, have you ever considered changing to some other job? Because with an attitude like yours, you shouldn't be working with people. If this is an example of kind of help they have around here, I'll take my business somewhere else. How many times have you experienced this kind of treatment? Quite a lot, right? And boy, does it make you mad. Of course, the bank teller didn't mean to be rude. She was merely reacting to the pressures of the job. But she certainly didn't make any friends for the bank. In fact, she lost a customer. Well, driving a bus is just about the same. We've got a lot of pressure on the job, but we can't afford to treat anyone poorly. Our riders can always find another way to travel. And if they do, we won't be needed how you would like to be treated if you were a passenger. Hi. Hi. You go to Sherman Oak? No, I do not I'm sorry. Oh, darn it. Um, I'm not really familiar with the area and I need to get out there. Isn't that where all the shopping centers are? Yeah, it's a great place to go shopping. Well, um, if I just stay here when another bus come by, I could take? I'm not sure. I have this bus information card and you can uh, take it and call the number and they can tell you what bus to take and where to catch it. Oh, okay. Thanks. Bye.
has expired on it. Look, I'm sorry, but I just got off the bus not more than 20 minutes ago. I have no more money. I have to get home. What do you want me to do? Well, the time has expired on it. I know the time has expired, but can't you just let me get away this once, please? Well, maybe the other operator did punch you wrong. It's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Just to cover myself, I'll make out an unenforced rule card. in here somewhere in just a minute and I'll find it. Now, if you step to one side, please, and uh, you can look. Please don't rush me. I'll find the pass in a minute. I don't mean to rush you. But if you stand on one side, my other pastors can board where you're looking. Take as much time as you like. Okay, I'll have a seat and find it. When I find it, I'll bring it up to you. Thank you. idealistic, right? Sure, we can't be perfect all the time. But the better we treat our passengers, the better our jobs will become. There will be fewer hassles, and our public image will improve. Out there on the streets every day, it's no picnic. But the beauty of it is, each one of us individually can make a difference. All we have to do is start treating our passengers like people. If we were to meet someone for the first time at our home or on the street, we would never dream of being rude. But something happens to us when we sit behind a desk at a bank or behind a steering wheel of a bus. All of a sudden, we're not Joe or Bob or Stephanie anymore. We're a bank teller or a cashier or a bus operator. And we speak and act in a way we would never do otherwise. Starting today, think of each passenger that walks through that door as just another human being instead of just another customer. We've got the finest public transportation system in the country. Together, we can make it even better. And now a word from the Director of Transportation at the Southern California Rapid Transit District, Ms. Leela Bailey. The city of Los Angeles and surrounding communities are experiencing rapid growth and development. More and more people are relocating into the area. This results in increased building of commercial and residential properties. The traffic on our streets and freeways is becoming increasingly congested on a daily basis. In today's climate of crowded freeways and the rapid growth of our communities, the demand for viable public transportation is in the forefront of issues facing our legislators, the business community, and each of us as private citizens. Many cities are seeking to set up their own small transit systems. They have the funds and the support of federal, state, and local politicians. Privatization is a concept of public transportation that we have come to be very conscious of. The proponents of this concept have targeted the RTD as a failing system that is non-responsive to the needs of the public. With the current problem of our overcrowded freeway system, Many drivers are becoming short-tempered and hostile as they prod along at a snail's pace to their destination. Operating a bus under these same conditions is not an easy task. The bus operator is concerned with a schedule and fares which include various passes, tickets, transfers, and cash. 
Added to that are the patrons who have questions, problems, and their own schedules to keep. Good operator-passenger relations helps both the patron and the operator start their day in a positive mood. In spite of all of the negative things that can happen to you as you operate your bus, you can make the difference by taking charge of yourself and your ability to be a professional interactor with the public. What does it mean to be a professional interactor? It's simple. Treating each patron who boards your bus with the same courtesy and dignity that you would expect and should get as a user of a public service. The one thing that the RTD offers to the public is a service, public transportation. You, the operator, are the immediate provider of that service, which makes you the RTD. When you behave toward a patron or other motorist in a discourteous, rude, or hostile manner, it is the RTD that is portrayed as such. So your actions as an individual reflect upon the RTD as a whole. Let's think about that for a moment. Our livelihood, the continued existence of the RTD as a public tax-supported organization rides with each of us as individuals along with the continued patronage of our riders. We depend upon the public to keep us employed. It must be our priority to conduct ourselves at all times in a manner that is praiseworthy as opposed to reaping constant criticism and complaints from the public. In recent times, the district has weathered lots of severe criticism, a deluge of negative press and television coverage. Employees must be committed to proving that this district can provide reliable, safe service to its patrons. Can we provide courteous, safe service? My response is yes. Each one of us in our respective capacities as RTD employees must ask this question of ourselves. I hope that your response is a resounding yes. Now we will address the problems of discourtesies to patrons and other negative job performance and what can be done to improve our overall performance. start our open discussion with your division instructor, here are just a few of RTD's finest bus operators from divisions all over the system. Because of operators like these, our company is still able to deliver safe, courteous, and timely service to the people of the greater Los Angeles area. Unfortunately, just a few bad operators can make us all look bad in the eyes of the public. After this short break, we will take a look at one of them. We will call him Wrong Way.
there. A dollar ten. And cigarette smoke bothers me a lot. Look, lady, this is my break. If you don't like to the smoke, then stand outside. It must be a hundred degrees out there. Just sit there and shut up. Just tell us, see if you don't like it. I don't care what you think. That as close as you can get to the curb. I'll just get off the bus. I've got a schedule to keep. Trying to get down to Los Angeles. You go there? Yeah. Would you let me know when we get to Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. I asked you to call the stop. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? Can't you talk? 
Look, lady, I get paid to drive this bus. I don't call stops. How am I going to get back to the music center? That's your problem. Old Wrongway certainly causes a lot of problems for himself. Not only out here on his run, but also back at the division. Because you see, in about 10 days, he's going to get to come see me in his box. And the first thing he's going to say is, why are they always picking on me? But he not only causes problems for himself and his customers, he causes problems for all of us. Because that customer that gets off his bus is going to get right back on one of ours. And then we have to start all over again, building up their trust and respect. And don't kid yourself, we need the public behind us. In 1988, we almost lost it all. But we learned a very important lesson. Not only can employees be replaced, but so can companies. I guess what it all boils down to is pride. I mean, sure, we make a good living here at RTD. Money, benefits, retirement. But that in itself isn't enough. We need to feel that what we do is worthwhile. And we need a lot of pride in ourselves. The kind of pride where it doesn't matter what you do for a living, you're going to do the very best job you can because that's the only way you know how to do it. The real payoff in life is feeling good about yourself. And it doesn't really matter what the other guy does because you don't have to look at him in the mirror every morning. Sure, we owe a job well done to our customers, but more importantly, we owe it to ourselves. Think about it.